Well, hello everybody. What I have in my hand here is a slightly older ESP8266, but look how teensy that thing is, huh? Um, it is uh, the predecessor to the ESP32. Um, a buddy of mine, Scott, who uh, was very generous to lend this to me, uh, and he loaded some deauthorization code, and I will show it to you. Um, but it's pretty slick, and it even has like a little connection that you can hook an antenna up to that, like clicking a little antenna on. It's got a reset button, and it's got a couple different banks that you can, I believe, boot from. Uh, I don't know much about this other than it is itsy bitsy and pretty sweet, you know? I mean, it just plugs into a USB. I've got a little adapter here, and I just plug it in. And uh, if I have it, you know, with USB, you always got to do it the wrong way and then try it again the right Well, that was, it's always the right way and then you still got to do it again. That's just the way I roll. Okay, let's uh, check this out. I'll show you how it works. It's, it's pretty slick. Okay, so um, the ESP8266 is powered up and it's running some code, <clears throat> which we'll look at. But um, here is the network. It brings up this PWNED or pwned owned um, access point, uh, excuse me, to the web interface, the 192.168.4.1. I'm just going to rescan for networks. It just scanned the networks and it found three indigos. There we go. It found a printer. So um, these three indigos are correct. They are actually um, wireless mesh access points. So it'll show three of them. I'm going to try the second one down and I'm going to, uh, let's scan it. Actually, I think we want clients. Okay, I want to search for the clients. So this will drop connection. You won't know it, but when we go into settings, we're going to see that we have been kicked off of the network because it has to kick everybody off to do the scan. Okay, here we see we've been kicked off, but it is back up, so we're going to reconnect. We're going to go back to the browser and look at this. Uh, Hewlett P and a couple other devices we found on the network. Um, the Hewlett P is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, I want to go to a different AP. Okay, here we go. We found it. <laughs> so here, uh, line, well, channel eight, the fourth line down, it says, uh, HP print 79 office jet pro. That is the one I'm going to select that. And then we are going to attack it. So we go to the attack. So I'm tapping along the top and we can de-auth it, which I'm going to launch a de-auth and then show you it actually drops. So let's kick it. Okay, let's go take a look at the printer. Okay, here I am at the printer and oh, it just started doing it. Just as I turned on the camera, I don't know if you saw it, but see how that, that Wi-Fi thing is blinking? And now down here, if I tap registration, it says printer must be connected to the network and internet for this feature. So it is a successfully being de-auth. I'll check, yep, yeah, IP not connected. Um, that was connected just a second ago. I'm going to go back into the app and we'll turn it off. Okay, I turned off the attack and it'll take a second or two, but that will reconnect now that the attack is over. There we go. We have an IP address. So here's another great one is this beacon clone. Let's start. Oops, I don't want to attack that printer. Okay, so we're attacking the beacon. Now if we go back to our Wi-Fi networks, Whoop, 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 whoop. Look at all these HP print. I mean, look at that. Good gravy. Because I have that selected. That's what we're attacking. Um, and it's just going to keep doing it until it eats up all the resources on this access point to where it's basically a denial of service. So let's turn that off. And it'll take a second to kind of clean itself up. The, um, the access point will... And notice that this one's locked. All these other ones are just open. I mean, look at them all. Oh, it's just going nuts. Um, these will go away pretty quickly. Oh, see, they're getting less and less, so it'll age them out. But, you know, uh, Wi-Fi has a, a finite number of channels that it can use, and once you use them up, well, that's that. Um, a beacon clone we just did, beacon list, starting. The beacon list, oh, down below it gives a description. Spams beacon frames with all SSIDs in the list below. Okay, that works. And then uh, the probe, what's the probe do? I didn't try that. Spam probe requests frames with all SSIDs in the list below, useful to confuse and um, spam Wi-Fi trackers. So that's pretty cool that it lets you do all that. Um, also, if we go over to settings, here's where you can say, you know, the Wi-Fi was pwned, the password was deauthored. You can obviously change that there. You can change the channel. 
uh, AP scan for hidden APs, client scan, attack, how long, some of the default settings if you want the LEDs on the board to go on or not. Really neat, right? Um, and then let's restart. I haven't tapped that yet. I wonder if that just initiates a restart. Did I, did I just do that? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, I guess not. Okay. I haven't used that one. Uh, but this is pretty slick and, uh, it's neat. Um, I'll show you the site that Scott got it at. It's, it's pretty tight. All right. Here we are, um, at the dauthor site. Now, um, it's, it's a nice website. If we go to up to the very top here, dauthor, looks like you can buy some, um, already created dauth, uh, devices, which is really cool. And they also have a link to GitHub here, which I clicked. And, um, this is the space hun. Um, I used some of uh, Space Hunt's code to do a different project on the ESP32, uh, but this is for the A266. It's got documentation about the project, and here's all the different code. And then if we go back to the site, um, how do I get to this? Okay, here we go. So about how it works. There's uh, downloads if you want to download right from here, and uh, a nice tutorial, uh, installation, display buttons, what you need, all that. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, how to use it. So here's the web interface and it kind of gives you a rundown of, you know, scanning and things like that. Super slick code, uh, really fun, uh, great to use. Just, you know, be careful with the DAW thing. There's always the legal concern. <clears throat> you know, I think it's good to use it to understand it. I kind of preach that where, you know, kind of um, use it as a tool to understand how these things work and how to detect them not a, a way to just mess with people because you can get in a lot of trouble. Please, please be very, very uh, conscious of that. Oh, look, they've built a very cool, gigantic watch. I don't know if, uh, I don't have giant wrists, so <laughs> giant wrists, so that may not be perfect for me. But if you want to do it on the go, um, this uh, only has a 2.4 gigahertz um, transceiver in it, I believe. So a lot of modern uh, devices are using five gigahertz, so you wouldn't be able to really do much to them. But to the, you know, like my old printer, for example, and maybe certain some IoT devices or other ESP 32s or different things might have, um, you know, a uh, a 2.4 gigahertz uh, transceiver in it for Wi-Fi. But super fun, and it looks like you can do all sorts of cool stuff if you want uh, on the command line and. You know, you should check this out. It's a super fun project. It's very slick. That GUI is nice and easy. And you can do fun stuff too. Like you can gen, um, like clone the um, AP, but you can clone it with funny names. You know, you can make any kind of names you want. I just had it replicate the exact same name, clone it, and just basically use up all the resources until it just knocks the, um, our, the, the legit access point out of service. And it will do that. <laughs> it's, it works. So, um, as I said, be careful, enjoy, and here's a little info about how to install it on the Arduino IDE if you want to install the code. Oh, cool, it even has a little animation. So, yeah, check it out.